who was deceased left a series of envelopes with names written on them to be read out of the wake. And, uh, well, it was quite interesting. It went like this. I'm going to read them from a note because um, I really just recently got them. To John. Is there a John here? And a John stood up. Yes, that's me. That £50 I left you in, uh, on lecture in 1998, you can keep it. So this is from a deceased person giving notes to the people in the wake. Brian, I've always wanted to tell you this. You're a wanker. <laughs> I know you wanted to shag my wife. <laughs> Kevin! Hey, that's me! I know you shag my wife. <laughs> Kevin! I've always wanted to tell you this. You know I shagged your wife. <laughs> and the last envelope was to, to a guy called Jerome, who was the IT technician. And he just said, thank fuck you deleted the files. <laughs> so it's staying with, um, we're going to move on to the wife actually, she's staying with the wife. She went to um, Heathrow recently and uh, I went with her because, well, you do hear of unaccompanied bags being blown up. <laughs> Don't you? But I want to tell you a quick story. I did get into serious trouble once at Heathrow <laughs> making jokes about bombs. <laughs> And I was um, arrested and marched off to the search room. And um, interesting situation. You know, um, they don't use any lubrication whatsoever. <laughs> and I'm sure the guy that uh, searched me was actually a vet. <laughs> Your eyes water something terrible, I can assure you. But however, it's always a good side to things, and I learned from the experience, and now I know, at least I think I know, what it's like to be fisted. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do you know, it actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was actually quite good fun. I'm thinking of introducing it to the wife you know, at the right time, and when I can find the right opening. <laughs> but uh, I think the wife probably would have preferred me to have been a film star, because she said to me a little while ago, she said, um, you know, you look like uh, Richard Gere from the film, An Officer and a Gentleman. And she went pretty, uh, pretty ape when I said to her, do you know, darling, you remind me of the whore in the film Pretty Woman. But um, I have made some money from the films, and uh, it's not widely known, and I'm happy to share this with you tonight. Hold on. Yeah, we're on our own. And <clears throat> I did feature in some very technical films. And unfortunately, the last one got cancelled because the bedroom door was too small to get the horse in. <laughs> And not um, many people got a part that night, I can assure you. But uh, made some money, put it in the bank, got this illusion to the banks like one does, withdrew the money and put it under my mattress. And that's quite good fun, I highly recommend that as well, because, you know, it's actually quite exciting coming into money. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to prove to you now that I'm not the... Um, Mr. Bister from Fista. And um, because, um, this will clear it up once and for all. I am actually quite well known by many of the ladies in my local neighborhood. And it's the ladies that call me the Silver Fox. And you can see why. Well, I'll put that in next time. And that's because they see me at night, sniffing round their bushes and shooting in their gardens. <laughs> so that proves I am the silver fox 
I'm not the best of Fister. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, we're making jokes about, you know, mentioning bombs and stuff. Did you see the news about that guy who should have gone to...